Okay class, today we're going to be learning about how some species of bacteria are becoming antibiotic resistant. Please turn to page 529 in your textbook to get started. <laughs> what, what page did you say? Like what even is a bacteria? Is that like a virus or something? <laughs> I'm actually really smart, but kids made fun of me when I was young, so now I just try to fit in. Science just isn't my thing. I'm more an artist. I can't express myself with these worksheets. Ms. Hanson, Ms. Hanson, I printed off this assignment last night and already did it. What do I do now? I get school and school gets me. I probably depend on my parents and other students and teachers too much, but hey, I get A's. Um, I guess since you already did the activity, Melissa, you can just read or something at your seat. Um, Everyone else, work on the worksheet in front of you. This is an independent activity. There's no need to talk. My scores are through the roof. This education system's never challenged me. I'm just counting down the days till I can drop out. So apparently, this assignment is only worth 10 points. It's not even worth doing. Sometimes, I just like to cause problems by challenging authority. It's fun to watch them squirm, and I don't even care if I get in trouble. I'm not as smart as some of my friends, but I work hard. I, I love challenges and I actually keep working after most of my smarter friends have given up. Well, that was a mess, wasn't it? I tried to teach my students using a one-size-fits-all approach, and it wasn't good for them, and it wasn't good for me. What can we do about it? Differentiation involves providing students with a variety of avenues through the content, enabling them to make sense and take ownership of the information through process, guiding them to create products that represent their knowledge, and offering a nurturing environment that builds learner autonomy. Gifted learners are unique individuals with unique needs. We as educators must be able to differentiate the learning environment so it is structured in ways that respect different brain requirements and it nurtures and supports the natural curiosity and creativity of our students. Let's watch as Ms. Hinkson now utilizes various differentiation strategies in order to address the needs of her gifted students. You can see her begin by creating interest and defining the learning objectives. Hey guys, as you walk into the classroom, be sure to check out the bacteria samples that you collected yesterday from around the school. Oh, nasty! Ew. Gross! Look at the Media Center keyboard! Oh my gosh, oh, look at the gross. door handle! That is yeah, nasty. look at the floor! As you take your seats, let's take a quick check for understanding on the material we covered in last night's lecture video of over bacteria structures and reproduction. Remember, the question we are currently exploring is, are humans responsible for creating anti-resistant superbugs? When you finish your check for understanding, take out your unit objectives with the terms you need to know, concepts you need to understand, and things you need to be able to do in order to answer our very important question. Don't forget to use this information to guide you as you continue working on your benchmark assignments. Hey ladies, give me an update on your work. So Melissa and I found these really cool websites and tutorials on antibiotic resistance. So we thought it would be awesome to turn it into a web quest for little kids where they actually learn about the topic. Wow. Oh. I like getting the chance to work with Melissa because she's just like me and doesn't make fun of me for being smart. I actually think she's convinced that I'm the brains of the operation. Learning how to create our own website has been a challenge, but one thing we like about our web quest is that the final step will really help little kids understand why it's important to finish your antibiotics and to only take them when really necessary. Unfortunately, this kind of assignment isn't one that I can just print off the blog and do. I actually have to think. But it's still pretty fun. That's great, ladies. I can tell you're both working really hard. Oh, great. You already have your email pulled up. Have you heard back from that Georgia Tech microbiologist yet? The interview questions that I, were great. I can't wait to hear the responses. 
I actually did. He sent me some information about his current antibiotic research, but I really didn't understand some of his conclusions on superbugs. I'm working on another email to send him to clarify so I can put the correct information in my presentation. I actually mentioned to Ms. Hinkson that I might, that I like to research and I might actually want to do that in my future. Turns out this guy is totally awesome. Actually dropping out may not be the best option for me. Maybe I'll even apply to Georgia Tech next year. Keep up the great work and let me know if I can help you inter interpret any of those uh, diagrams and data figures. I know you prefer to work on your own, but I'm here for you if you need me. Thank you. <laughs> so tell me about the experiment you're designing. You took on a tough challenge, but I know you won't give up. Well, my hypothesis is that the increased use of hand sanitizers is actually contributing to the problem of antibiotic resistance, but I'm having trouble designing my procedure. Do I have the independent and dependent variables identified correctly? I'm not going to lie, this is difficult. Most of my friends would have given up by now, but Ms. Hinkson makes it all so interesting and relevant. I use hand sanitizer every day. Have I helped create this problem? Yep, your variables are correctly identified. Keep going, your hard work is really paying off. Awesome, thanks. All right, ladies, give me an update on your work. I found this awesome poem by Nayad Nandan about antibiotic resistance. I'll perf be performing a dramatic interpretation over a slideshow of images. It's going to be a true masterpiece. Oh. Who would have thought you could integrate art into a biology course? The discovery of antibiotics has saved millions of lives, fathers, mothers, children, and wives. Our miracle drug increased lifespans today, our greatest weapons to keep diseases at bay. So while Ashley has been practicing her monologue, I have been searching for images. Ashley and I will then work together to film and edit our video with this cool app that we found. Ms. Hinkson actually makes it hard for me to cause problems. She helps me to realize that it's not a problem, but I'm actually creative. That's why I like working with Ashley. She's creative too, but she needs me to rein her in a little bit. I love how self-directed you guys have been throughout this whole assignment. I love seeing you both use the part of your brain that's outside of your comfort zone. Our differences make us who they, we are, don't they? Thank you for all of your hard work today. Your exit ticket is to lay out your plan for the rest of the week, and then our gallery walk presentations are on Friday, so make sure you're ready. To us, this is what the ideal classroom looks like. Each of us receiving the content in a way that addresses our needs. The curriculum is effective, efficient, and exciting. It's okay if your classroom doesn't look like this every day, but differentiation is important. Don't feel like you need to be the sage on the stage. It's okay to be the guide on the side, and we actually like it. Most of all, we just want to be respected and make what we're learning meaningful to us. As you can see, there are many types of gifted and high achieving learners. A classroom with a one size fits all approach looks very different from a classroom aimed at meeting the needs of all students. As we close out, let's remember some of the important aspects of differentiated instruction. Present content that is related to broad based issues, themes, or problems. Encourage the development of self understanding. Integrate multiple disciplines into the area of study. Allow for in-depth learning of self-selected topics. Develop independent or self-directed study skills. Integrate basic skills into the curriculum through higher order thinking. Encourage products with new technologies, techniques, and materials. And evaluate student products with appropriate criteria. And finally, and perhaps most importantly, create a classroom that builds an inquisitive atmosphere utilizes flexible instructional groups, encourages acceptance of diversity in both people and ideas, creates a learning environment that is interesting, enjoyable, challenging, and choice-filled.